Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be taking a look at It's a Wonderful Kingdom, designed by Frederic Carrard and published by Origams and La Butte de Joux. Now this is the legendary edition of the game, which means that it's going to include a lot of additional components and modules, as well as a fully sleeved copy of all the cards that come in the game. All of this is organized in the core box with no lid lift and is organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible. With all that being said, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. Let's get started with organizing It's a Wonderful Kingdom. First off, let's lift this lid, and inside you'll see that we have the rule books for the game. First off, we have the additional rules here. This is for that Legend Edition for all your additional modules, as well as the rule book for the base game, which is going to contain all of your basic modules and core rules. Underneath that, we have our game board. This is going to be your board that's going to track all of your resource production, as well as your training camps for your soldiers. Place that in the center of the table or you can use this larger board that does come with that Legendary Edition. This replaces that main game board, but it's nice to have both in case you have limited space, you can use this one instead. Underneath all of the boards, you have your cards for your quest module, as well as the dry erase scoreboard for the game. Up next, you'll have the boards for the conquest module. On this top section here, we have a foam cube that's used to divide these two piles of cards. If you don't have a cube, you can use just a piece of cardboard, or you can use even one of the little tuck boxes that comes in the game here. So you can use that to just separate it. You just want to keep these two piles separated so the cards aren't banging into each other. Now on this left side cards, we have all of our different construction cards here. So they will all categorized and sleeved here. And you'll also have all your duchies. And then up next, you'll have all of your different module cards. So you have your different menace modules, as well as your calamities, and then your treasure cards, as well as your advisors. So it's all based on what you decide to play with. So these will be on that left and right section, respectively. Now, the Legendary Edition does come with sleeves for the game. It comes with 170 at the 67 by 102 millimeter size. But if you don't have access to these, you can go ahead and get the Arcane Tinman Extra Large Board Game Sleeves. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go ahead and get some yourself. And that brings us to our last section here, the component organizer. I'll leave a link in the description below. This one is from the Dollar Tree, a local US retailer, and they have these for $1 a piece. I really like the way that you just simply lift off the lid here, set it up, and you're ready to go. You can put up everything you need from here. There's no separate boxes or anything you need to be opening or taking out. Now, one thing this really plays into are the tuck boxes that come in play for all the resources. I really dislike having to open up each individual box, and a lot of them come with a tiny little plastic bag that has the cubes, because in each of these as a small tray. I really like the trays though and I wanted to maintain those functionalities so you could put the trays on the different spots on the board. I really like the way that they're used as those resource bins but I hated the fiddliness of having to open up each package. I really despise this so I went ahead and just got rid of all of these and instead we employed this organizer. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this organizer and what each section is going to hold. So first off, on these left sides, we have those resource bins I talked about, and I really like that you can just take them out here with their plastic containers and place them on their appropriate spots on the board. Now, I do want to show you you can actually close up the box here, and they are going to survive a shake test. So we'll shake it all up and down. You might want to record or mute the volume here because it could get a little bit loud. One, two, three, here we go. So with all that shaking, all of the components do stay in their bins here, and I really like that because you're not going to fly anywhere, but they still retain that functionality of being able to take that resource tray and place it on the board. So you'll put two of the bins in each of these top sections, and they'll just go like so. And then that last section, you're going to have one bin with your crystallium cubes and then your different tokens for the traps. So you can put some cards face down. So you'll be using all of these things on the left here every game. But I really like the way that they all fit in here, especially with those special little bins that they come with. Up next, you have your different pieces for the Conquest game, your solo mode tokens, your round marker, as well as the different tokens for your different modules for those nemesis creatures. You have your soldier tokens that you'll be using, the dry erase marker for your score pad, and then additional tokens in case you don't want to use the metal coins for some reason. I'm not really sure what these are for. Maybe we can find a use for them in the future. You could probably just toss these out. But that's everything in this organizer. I think it works extremely well, and everything is clearly laid out, and you simply lift that lid off. There's no fiddling with all all of these little tuck boxes and I just love the way it works. So strong recommendation from me here and it fits super nicely and keeps everything else packaged in this box. And that's everything in the box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. So first off, we start with our organizer here. We'll place that on the bottom and then we'll take our large stacks of cards, starting with our construction and duchy cards and then all of our module cards on the right here. Up next, we'll take this foam cube and place it in that center section. We'll then take our conquest board and put them on top like so. And then we'll take our dry erase scoreboard as well as our different quest module cards. We'll put our extra sleeves on top of that. And then we'll place the large game board like so, as well as our smaller game board on top. 
We'll then take our rulebook from the base game as well as our legendary edition rulebook, close the lid up here with that base game lid. And last but not least, let's put that large sleeve in here. It's going to fit your core game snugly. And that is organizing It's a Wonderful Kingdom, the Legends Edition. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. How do you organize your copy of It's a Wonderful Kingdom? Do you still use those tuck boxes, or have you upgraded to something a little bit more clean and faster? I'd love to hear what you think, and I'd love to hear if you're enjoying It's a Wonderful Kingdom. But thank you so much for watching. Side Game Strong.